Okay, so uh, we've got uh, uh, a bunch of material today that uh, relates to uh, material we've been covering the past few lectures on uh, CSETs, um, that is uh, copre sheaves, um, these uh, encodings of, uh, of information um, that provide a very versatile way of characterizing structures from dynamical systems to graphs uh, to uh, types of information like we may want to capture with agents uh, within agent-based models uh, to uh, additional structures that we might seek to capture in characterizing uh, causal loop diagrams or stock and flow diagrams. We're going to be seeing CSETs all through this course um, as sort of this uh, extremely powerful, general, reusable uh, units of abstraction um, that we're going to be leveraging in for the purposes of categorical simulation. Okay, um, and uh, within the past few lectures, we've uh, examined many of the basics uh, for encoding this information for uh, characterizing maps uh, between these systems in, in a way that is structure preserving, not any old scrambling map between systems, but maps that cohere, maps that capture and retain the, the, uh, uh, the, the um, preserve elements of structure and mapping from one uh, instance say a, a dynamical system to another dynamical system or from one graph to another uh, another graph. A mapping that retains the essential structures uh, might, might allow for embedding in a larger system, might allow for collapsing certain distinctions, but in a way that's consistent. And we've seen what that looks like for um, three types of systems thus far as kind of examples. Uh, we've seen what those so-called homomorphisms look like for graphs. We've seen what they look like for discrete dynamical systems characterizing automata. And we've seen what they look like um, as well for these characterizations of information in a way that we might have in an Asian-based model, um, sort of with a nod towards where we're going. But we had one fourth type of uh, of need there, and and um, uh, that concerned uh, causal loop diagrams. And I'd like to within this session, I'd like to talk about causal loop diagrams, uh, and I'd also like to uh, speak about ways in which once we describe the homomorphisms, these structure preserving mappings for sort of a primitive representation of causal loop diagrams, but one that notionally points us in the direction we're going with them. We're gonna be looking at diagrams of these categories in categorical operations on those. We're gonna be talking about terminal objects and initial objects, products and co-products, and soon enough, pullbacks, pushouts, and other types of, of universal construction. Okay, so that's where we're going broadly. Now, um, within this context, uh, we're going to be zooming in for the moment on, on these causal loop diagrams because um, are these primitive gestures at causal loop diagrams um, because those will be uh, newer to us. So um, I believe that I placed up there on the, the course site a file um, that focuses on causal loop diagrams. Can anyone verify that? Um, I wanna make sure that it is there because if it's not, yeah, primitive causal loop diagram homomorphisms. Um, I, I see it up there and maybe uh, people could, uh, uh, could try uh, drawing it down if you'd like to make use of it. It's called six under bar primitive causal loop diagrams homomorphisms v2 um and uh, for those who uh don't have access to that i'm hoping that 
perhaps um, known as part of her kind distribution might might be able to uh, provide that. If you don't have it handy, I'll also provide it within the context of the uh, here of the uh, uh, Zoom chat. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm, I'm sending it right now in the Zoom chat in case that's handy. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, let's let's turn to that. Um, so I'm running Docker. Um, I think um, everyone here has access to that Docker container um, for the requisite um, uh, Docker image that Eric helped build for CatLab. So we're going to go over to our notebook um, that I just shared with you, to our Jupyter notebook. Okay, and I'm going to share my screen to this end, and we'll get going here. Okay, and here we go. One. Um, okay, can people remotely see my screen right now? Okay. Um, great. Um, so within this notebook, I'm going to define something with just which gestures at the sort of encoding to which we're moving for causal loop diagrams. And I'm hoping as well that this first gesturing at that will highlight to us the need for a more sophisticated encoding, which will take us in the direction of attributed C sets, not just the C sets, the pure C sets, the, the copri sheaves we're dealing with, but instead augment it with additional attribute information. But first, let's let's uh, as Lewis Carroll admonished us, start at the beginning, uh, and then we'll we'll go to the end from there. Okay, so I've got this up in my Jupyter notebook. I'm going to um, start uh, executing it from the top, and uh, I'm defining here a a, a, a similar a sim a simple schema, a primitive schema. Um, for causal loop diagrams. I'm, I call it schema primitive causal loop diagram one. And it consists of three types of quantity. So any primitive causal loop di diagram will be an instance of this schema, right? A mapping from this schema to set, right? You're familiar with that notion. Uh, functor from the schema to set. There are three objects. Um, the set of vertices of the causal loop diagram, the set of po positive links in the causal loop diagram and the set of negative links in the causal loop diagram. So these are links associated with a, a plus sign and a minus sign for those familiar with causal loop diagrams. Each of those are objects. And so the functor, uh, which is going to map this over, is going to map this over to set, it's going to it's going to map each of the objects to an object in set, and an object in set is a what? We've all been through this exercise before. Uh, an, an object in set is a a set. A set. Thank you. So there's going to be a set of vertices, a set of positive links, and a set of negative links for any given causal loop diagram. Are we comfortable with that? So any given causal loop diagram. It's going to have some number of vertices, some number of plus links connecting the vertices, and some number of minus links connecting the vertices. And because those connect the vertices, the the um, uh, the plus links they have a source for them that's a vertex. So there's a map from the set of plus links to the set of vertices, right? And so that's a that's a map in the schema. You can see it here, source plus. And when what the functor maps that over to set, that morphism in the schema gets turned into a morphism in set. And a morphism in set is a what? What's a, it's a function. And it's a function in set from the set of plus links to the set of vertices. So we're comfortable with that. Should be review. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. 
And same thing with the target of the plus link, right? It's going to be a mapping from the set of plus links to the set of vertices. It's going to map each plus link to find, to its target for that link, the, the vertex to which it goes, right? So each one of these is going to be mapped to a specific vertex, right? So maybe mapped to the same vertex. That's fine because there may be many links into the same vertex. Are we fine with that? Okay. And then similarly for the minus links, right? Are we are we good with this? Okay. Um. Now having defined that schema and graphed it out with two graph fists. So this is the schema, right? This this is a presentation of the schema category. It's a free category. Um, in this case, there's there's really no sort of non-trivial uh, compositions, right? Um, um, since there are really no end-to-end -end arrows other than identities with, with, with these. But now we're going to define an AC set type, and, and that's going to define the attribute, the, the, the mapping from this category to set, right? Or it's going to define the type that consists of that. And any given causal loop diagram, a specific causal loop diagram, is going to be an instance of one of one of these. It's a particular functor mapping from the schema to set. Are we good with that, that idea? You know, I, I say these things partly to remind those in the room, but and, and who are joining us online as part of the class, but partly for people out there on the web who are encountering this video in isolation. I want to be sure, you know, we're all, we all level set, right? Okay, now, um, we're going to now make use of this. And and I, I kind of got uh, encrupted with some things here, but I want to skip down to this before we go back to some of those things. So here I'm declaring a specific primitive causal loop diagrams, which is going to have reciprocal connections, one of which is going to be plus and one of which is going to be minus. And you're going to help me interpret this. So I, I, I want to you know, test, make sure I everyone's on board. So what is this saying? How many vertices are in this causal loop diagram? This particular instance of this schema uh, is going to map it to sets. Uh, so vertices can be mapped to set in the set of vertices is of what size? Size what? Two. Two, good. So there's two vertices. And, and how many plus links are there? One. One. How many minus links are there? One. Okay, good. And oh, this is this is interesting. Um, okay, so 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 this is uh, yeah. So this makes sense. Okay, right. So there's two vertices. The for, for the plus link goes from which vertex to which vertex? You can look at this. It goes from one to two, right? Um, there's only one such link. That's why this this array only has one element in it, right? Um, so it's saying this plus link goes from, it has as a source, what does this one mean? What is one? The its source is the what vertex one, and it's going, its target is vertex two. And the minus link is going from what? Which from which vertex? Its source is two and it's going to one. Okay. And so you know, we can define this schema. Are you comfortable with that idea that that's an instance of that schema up above, right? It's a particular instance mapping this to set, right? Vertex maps to a certain set of vertices, plus links to a certain set, minus uh, links to a certain set, right? Um, and and here we, we we see the encoding of this as a categorical database. Remember, when we have these categorical databases, um, they will uh, they will have a table for each object. Mm -hmm. Each object will have a table. Um, here it's showing the tables quite explicitly for L plus and L minus. It, it doesn't happen to show it for V. Why, why isn't it showing it for V? What what is it about the plus and the minus that 
mean the table is particularly you know it's it's really has some texture whereas for v it's particularly simplistic why is that why don't you think through so for l plus what are these columns there's a column for each what for l plus there so again i'm, I'm sort of deepening this make sure everyone's on the same page with this notion of of kind of encoding of a map from a schema to set as a database. So why does that table have two, two columns uh, beyond the primary key column? This is the primary key column. This this is a column that will tell us all the values of of the of of the set L plus um, to which L plus maps. Here there's just one. But what are these two columns? The two columns here are in this table because of what? What is it about L plus? It means there's two columns. Just yeah, it's a source and target. There's two HOM, HOMs out of it, two morphisms out of it, source plus target plus. If there were three of these, there'd be three columns because it needs a column for each foreign key. Each, it has to say where to where it maps it. No, I say foreign key because it, it says I map it to the 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 following vertex, mm -hmm. the following uh, um, the following vertex. So uh, it, it it points it to a so called foreign key because it's a it points to the to a place on the vertex table. Okay, and the same thing with L minus. Save a source. Why isn't there a vertex table? Why isn't that shown? There is a table, but it, but it's not shown because it's so simple. It's just like one and two. Yeah, yeah, it's just one, one, two, exactly. So it doesn't even bother showing it because there's no palms out of it. There's no morphisms out of it. And so just be aware that this each of these instances isn't is a database. It's a, it's a database encoding of this. Okay, um, a table for each object. Are we comfortable with that? Okay. So, um, and don't be fooled that there's no vertex table. There is, it's just a particularly simple type. We good? Is that kind of the same idea as why you wouldn't show identity? Either? Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of. It's so basic. That... It's, it's so basic, it doesn't add any information yeah. beyond, you know, what you know about the number of, the size of that set. Because mm -hmm. it's always one, two, three, four, five. And, mm -hmm. and it's a, a, a characteristic we see in like, the skeleton of fin set, uh, this category, it, like where there's only one set of size two, one set of size three, it's the set one, two, or it's a set one, two, three, and everything else is considered just a, you know, it, it, that's boiling it down to its essence because the idea is that everything else is just isomorphic. Any set of size three is isomorphic to it. It's just a matter of renaming things, and if labeling. We more complicated adding elements to those vertexes then we would yeah start putting we'd start yeah we'd start showing that it's mm -hmm. it's it's kind of just a decision on cat lab's part not to bother mm -hmm. showing that yeah okay but here we declared an instance of this right um an instance of this causal loop diagram right um so we encode a particular causal loop diagram and we can with this category of elements we can display that right and so here we had two vertices that's this and this and and we have two one minus link and one plus link and you know this is not a very um it's not a very nice way of showing cause uh, showing cause loop diagrams but you can kind of squint at it and make it out right so this l minus it originates in this vertex because it's source minus it goes to this vertex and this plus link originates here and it goes to this uh, to this plus eh? mm -hmm. and so it, it it kind of goes around this way you can kind of squint at it and and kind of see it kind of it's um, terrible <laughs> it's terrible yeah it's terrible and and that's why Chayan has put some uh, added investment for for real causal diagrams mm -hmm. yeah um okay we see some needs beginning to develop Okay, now we're going to declare a broader one here. Uh, how many vertices is this going to have? Two. Two. How many plus links? 
Plus two or minus one. Minus one, that's right. And let's try to see it. Um, okay, for the plus links, what are the first plus link is going to go from what to what? One to two, right? One, two. And the other one's going to go from two to one, right? Are we good with that? Okay. And then the minus link is going to go from what? One to two. We good? Okay. Um, okay. And once again, we can kind of visualize this and yeah, I know it's painful. Um, okay, so, so you got vertex here. This guy here is going from which direction? Now it's coming from here, it's going to that. This one is coming from here and going like that. So here's a plus, here's a plus, right? Okay, so there, so it kind of goes like this, kind of goes like this. And then there's a minus, which it's kind of hard to see, but um, I think it, it goes from this to this, okay? And I actually drew it out. Cheyenne and I kind of, uh, I, I couldn't figure out a way to make it happen uh, in the way that Cheyenne uh, did it before. And it may be a version of Jupyter Notebook, but um, uh, it looks like like this, okay? The first causal loop looked like this and um, where we had something like this. Uh, and the second one looked like, looks like this okay so we have we have a uh, plus link plus link here and, and a balancing link here okay um uh now you notice we uh, it what it loses in in aesthetics it also loses because it's not telling us what what is one what is two we're going to be coming to that we're in Believe me, we're just enumerating our needs here. But but there's actually some some useful things you could do. And so I want to ask, okay, so here are our causal loop diagrams. Mm -mm. Here are primitive causal loop diagrams. Look at that, okay? And we're going to map them. We're going to map from, okay? We're going to map from this guy into this guy. And you're going to tell me, are, are there maps from this one into this one? If so, how many are there? Yeah. Okay, I love this discussion. So let's let's keep and it going. Minus one to two one is the second. There is not any mapping. If we map one to one and two to two, or the uh, first minus from two to one, it is not any mapping. Second one. Right. Yeah. We can look at it the opposite way. If yes. Flipped it, right? Exactly. You map two to one and one to two. You could, if you map, if you map, Mehdi is right that if you map one to one here um, and two to two, then then you're stuck, right? And like, you're not going to be able to do it because there's nothing to map them. The minus two, um, the the minus map you can't map minus to anywhere. Then, yeah. um, um, in this minus, yeah, this minus can't be mapped to, to anywhere here because there's no minus link here. One. But if you map one to two and two to one, as Jenna said, then you're in business, right? Okay, let's let's just think about it. One to two, and two to one. Okay, so um, here uh, we could let, let's just think. Okay, so if one goes to two here, um, uh, and two goes to one here. Um, then, do we have something going from that one to which we mapped it back to the one to map it? Yeah. So, so we need we need these things to stick together. Remember that those uh, naturality squares, right? If if we can go from two to one here, we we should be able to either go from two to one here and map that over to say to two, or we should be able to map one to two and two to one, and then be able to go from on, on a on a negative link, right? Um, and can we do that? Yes, we can. Um, yes, we can. 
Um, and the same thing for the plus here. Um, the plus here is from one to two. Uh, and we can either go over here um, and go over and map two to one, right? Or we can map one to two, go over here, and then, um, and and we're going to be at the same place that um, that that two would map to, right? Um, uh, so, so in short, to be natural, you need to be able to do it. You know, to 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 do this operation over here to to follow this link here and then map over. It needs to be the same result, right? It needs to commute with, give the same result as mapping. Uh, the vertex over, going on the corresponding link here, and then um, uh, and 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 that yields a vertex here that needs to be the same as that that one that was mapped over. Okay, um, okay. So uh, here we have these two causal loop diagrams, and there is a homomorphism. Is there more than one? Just one. And we can, in fact, verify that here in our notebook by asking it to enumerate all the homomorphisms here. And here it says, okay, uh, the vertex one uh, goes to vert vertex one and cause loop diagram one goes to vertex two in diagram two. Vertex two and cause loop diagram A goes to to, to vertex one and, and B, mm -hmm. just like Jenna pointed out. Yeah. Um, and there are similar maps for the for the uh, plus and minus links. Are we good with that? Okay. Um, so here we have homomorphisms between causal loop diagrams. And notice that it's easy to look at a causal loop diagram and say, well, it's just kind of a graph. And is a graph, but but this is a form of homomorphism that preserves structure. And preserving structure here means retaining the polarities, right? It has to, it can't map plus to a minus one or a minus to a plus. It, it has to retain the polarities. So when we deal with cause when we deal with homomorphisms for certain structures, um like for a discrete dynamical system. Um, or for a, uh, we saw last time for that agent like uh, um, uh, inspired um, C set, remember with dogs and people and so on. Um, and for graphs, what it has to maintain is a little bit different uh, for each of those cases, isn't it? You know, the details of what we're trying to preserve, but they, they all have, this flavor, regardless whether it's dynamical systems, regardless of whether it's a uh, a matter of of graphs, or whether it's a causal loop diagram, or whether it's that agent schema, they all have this naturality square for each morphism over here in the schema. Right, uh, we have to be able to either take it, um, map over, and and uh, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, yes. So when we consider uh, uh, going from one of the C sets to another, we need to be able to either map over to the other one and then uh, take the encoding of this uh, of this morphism. Maybe it's source, maybe it's target, maybe it's next, uh, maybe it's the mapping from person to province. And that has to give the exact same result as taking in the original set. Maybe it's a causal loop diagram. Maybe it's a graph, what have you, and 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 taking in that source one and then mapping over. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we saw here. Um, yeah. So when talking to causal loop diagrams. Yeah. Um, when you think about a more complex diagram that has yeah. more elements to a loop. Yes. Um, and you think about yeah. polarities or like the reinforcing versus balancing behaviors of yes. loops. Yeah, yeah. Is there ways then to like, when you have yeah. like a, yeah. just one vertex with a positive loop around right. it, would that find all? Great question. 
like there, the larger it, you, you you have asked a 64 million dollar question and the answer is yes we can do it with the right encoding okay and i will show you okay. in this very class and probably from this very seat how we'll do that and it's been pioneered by none other than the uh, esteemed Evan Patterson of Topos. And there's a beautiful solution to it, which um, has all of beauty, power, utility, and practicality to recommend it. And you will see it soon. Okay. But it takes into account the compositional structure, it takes into account that, that when you have two links in a row, it implies, for example, a composite of them yeah. that comes from, and in fact, every pathway. So I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe I can share the paper to the chat Great. channel. If I'm e excellent, there. excellent. Yeah, it's and there's a page in the paper where it's spelled out, but we'll be walking through the explanation too in this class, and it's beautiful. But it involves things called slice categories and, and um, but it'll be a story that you're able to unpack once once or we're able to unpack quite nicely. Yeah, and we'll be explaining what slice categories are. But this naturality square is directly associated with this reasoning we're doing, right? This is one, this is F, the encoding of one. This is G, the encoding of the other. And by by talking about going across this loop, we're talking about, you know, transitioning within our schema right across some of these like source plus source target etc and and we're we're going through the the basic ideas of this uh, uh associated with the natural transformation and asking is there a homomorphism from one to the other and we we explicated explicated that in previous sessions so i'm not going to spend much time on it because i want to get to the products so okay but once again, we see how we can do um, um, how how we can do. Excuse me. Um, find these homomorphisms here, and we see how they preserve here polarities. And yes, Jen, now we're going to be able to to reason about the um, uh, the compositional structure and uh, ensure that we, when we collapse things down, we preserve the the compositional structure, and it'll be beautiful. Okay. We good? Okay. So I just wanted to introduce causal loop diagrams, but um, uh, as as a final C said, and introduce their homomorphisms. So when we when we have these C sets, um, what it gives us um, is, regardless of whether we're talking about graphs or whether we're talking about discrete dynamical systems, automata. Or, um, or any sort of CSET, causal loop diagrams, um, these agent-inspired schemas, we have this category of co sheaves okay? A category of CSETs, where each of these objects, I said it last time, so you're going to tell me, each of these objects is a what? What is, what is each of these objects in one of these categories? Mm -hmm. So so let let's let's pick a particular one. Just we could, if 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 we're looking at the category of graphs, this is a pre sheaf category. So each of these objects is a what? It's a C set. It's a C set. It's a particular graph. Mm -hmm. And each of these morphisms between them is a what? It's a homomorphism between graphs. It's a structure preserving transformation between graphs. Okay. It's a well behaved morphism between graphs. Not any old mapping, not it's some sort of slapdash, you know, splat mapping um, that scrambles things. No, it's a coherent, well ordered mapping that preserves structure. And we've, we've spent this time in the past few lectures talked about the nature of those homomorphisms as recently as just now with 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 um with, with these uh causal loop diagrams right so every c set is associated with a category like this the objects are instances of the c set right and there'll be a category like this 
for a particular schema, right? I'm, I wanna be clear. It's not like some of these are graphs and some are automata and some are causal diagram. No, no, no. This is, this is a category. It's a copre sheaf category for a specific schema, right? And we'll sometimes write it just so you're familiar with the um, uh, with the terminology. We'll sometimes write it as like this. Uh, each of these would be written. So so this is sometimes called the uh, 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 this category where the objects are functors. So a mapping from the graph schema. This is the graph the schema for graphs. This is this guy up here, GR, mapping from that to set. Um, this is a category of mappings from GR to set where each object is a functor from GR to set, okay? So this is, a, and the morphisms in that are homomorphisms between these, which are natural transformations, natural transformations between these functors. So the object is a functor, and the morphisms are natural transformations. Are we okay with this? Okay. Now, um, uh, this, I told you from the C, I believe, that these each of these categories, we have one for graphs, we, because it's a C set. We have one for, for discrete dynamical ses, uh, systems, because it's a C set. We have it for, these uh, causal loop diagram, primitive causal loop diagrams, because it's a CSET, right? We have it for that agent inspired schema with dogs and people and age groups and provinces because it's a CSET. We have one of these categories. Hmm? Are we co good with that, this idea? Um, and these categories are special categories. They're nice places to do math, as David Spivak says, because they are topoi, they are toposes. Um, they are, they have these nice properties. They have finite limits, things like terminal objects, and they have products and pullbacks. They have finite co-limits. They have things like initial objects and co-products and pushouts. They have exponential objects. They they have objects that represent their morphisms. Just like in Haskell, we have a type that represents a type into bool that represents the type uh, associated with, with functions from ints to bools. Mm -hmm. Can encode, you know, can can refer to a particular function that has a type for a function that, that maps from ints to bools. Any function maps from ints to bools um, is is you know, can be uh, typed by that that type. So this has this has uh, uh, the ability to encode its own morphisms, right? morphisms with an object. Um, uh, it also has the ability to do logic on it. Okay, so it has a subobject classifier, the ability to describe ands and ors and nots and 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 things like this. Um, so it's a beautiful structure. And because this is a structure with all these endowed with all these nice categorical properties, we can do very useful things. And in this class, we will be doing useful things when we do things like compositions with structured cospans, when we do things like stratifications of causal, of uh, of uh, stock flow diagrams, or we could do them with causal loop diagrams if we wanted to. Um, we will be using these categorical properties. And I ask you to start exploring these in the take-home exercise. Are you good to explore this with me? Let's explore it a bit together, shall we not? Okay, so let's go over to graphs. Let's go take our, our look at graphs, okay? Here we go. So we had this take-home exercise three, right? And I, Reminding you of graphs and schemas. So I said, hey, we have these schemas. We have this whole category for each of them of C sets. Um, so you tell me, vigorous youths, what, what is the terminal object? Now, vigorous youths can help me 
get unlost here. Here we go. Um, okay. Uh, is, is it? No, here we are. Take them exercise three. Here's graph. What is the terminal object for graphs? What is the terminal object for graphs? What is the graph? Remember, a terminal object has in this category. Sorry, no, no. I'll, I'll just want to remind people the terminal object would have to be something that every other object has what? What makes it the terminal object? Every other object has a. So it's a particular object, a terminal object, it's a particular object. What's an object here? It's a. Each of these graph. objects is a what? Graph. It's a graph. So it's a graph. It's, it's the graph called the terminal. Graph. Well, it could be more than one, but as long as they're isomorphic to each other. Okay, so this is some terminal graph. Terminal the graph, as David Spivak might say. Um, um, and that terminal graph, what is it that distinguishes it? What's its universal property? That any all, other, say all, it all other graphs um, have a unique homomorphism into it. Yes, a unique homomorphism into it, including itself. <laughs> they have a unique homomorphism into itself, right? Is there such a graph? Is there any graph that has unique mapping from any other graph to it? What is it? Okay. Okay, so how many bird? So a graph? We, we know the graph schema, right? We know the graph schema. How many vertices does it have? We have edges and vertices. How many vertices does it have? In the terminal one. One. And how many edges does it have? One. And maybe it's redundant to say it, but where does that edge go? Where where does that edge go to? Whence does it come? From where does it come? The From the single vertex. And it goes to... The vertex, right? No choice in the matter, right? Um, okay. And any other, so the claim is that any other graph can be collapsed to that, right? Uniquely. So tell me, I've got the very, really big honking graph with all these, these, these vertices. Tell me, what, what's the mapping like for all those vertices? Where do they go? They go to the, okay, the, the vertices all go to what? The one of vertex. And all the edges go to where? The one. the one edge. There's no choice in the matter, right? Yeah, just like just like if, if we asked in set, what's the terminal object in set? A, a singleton set, right? Yeah. Um, Right. Um, if, if if I had a singleton set, and we they're all isomorphic to each other, all the singleton sets. So let's just talk about as if there's one singleton set. Any other one, any uh, any set can be mapped to that with no choice, right? Because it can be mapping from a giant set, and all it maps each element of that giant set is, and its input. It's just, it's no choice in the matter. It just maps it to the single element in the output, right? So there's no choice. And so similar, there's no choice with this being our terminal object. There it is, right? Mm -hmm. And here's our picture of it. There, isn't that a nice object? What's the initial object? Oh, empty. empty. Yeah. What's the initial set? Does anyone remember? What's the initial set? Empty, empty set. It has a unique vacuous thing to any other set. There's nothing to do, right? Remember the criteria for a function. Remember when we're dealing with set, we're dealing with the objects are what? In set, in the category set, the objects are, what are the objects in set? Dave, uh, so so Eric said it earlier, what are, what are the objects in set? The, the category set has what as objects? sets that each set is an object and the morphisms are Function. functions between those sets right yeah and so what we're saying is the initial set is the empty set because 
for a function, its job in life is for each element of the of its input set, the set from which it's mapping, it has a job to do. It has to give a unique value from the from the target set. And here, the empty set, there's nothing to give, right? It's vacuously it exists, it's function. It just is done. <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. Um are we good with this? Okay, so that's that's our terminal and our initial. Okay, you tell me for for discrete dynamical systems, what are we dealing with there? Hmm? Okay, so we're gonna go down to discrete dynamical systems in this, which are which are further down. We'll come back, believe me, we'll come back for products and so on. Um, but let's let's start with the basics. Um, hey, way down there. Hey, get down there. Okay. Um, here are discrete dynamical systems. Okay, so we have a discrete dynamical system. This is what its schema looks like. Okay, what's the terminal object here? One state and what's its next? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, it just and and what does it map it to? It's a, there's no choice, right? And this is very much the the nature of terminal objects. You know, they they're universal. They they're canonical. There's there's no choice in the matter. Okay, what's its what's the initial dynamical system? Empty state, and as a vacuous like update. There's nothing to do, right? It's nothing to do. Um, okay, we we good with that? Okay. Um, Maybe I'll ask you. Don't mind if I do. So you you reason about this as part of the, the homework. I'm going to ask you a question. Now we've seen two other schemas that I didn't ask about in the take-home exercise. Um, causal loop diagrams. Mm -hmm. That primitive causal loop diagram schema. What's the terminal object in a causal loop diagram, that simple causal loop diagram scheme. What do you think? A single vertex with both the positive and the negative. You got it. You got it. It needs what would what would be the matter if I just said, well, I think it's just a vertex by itself. No link. What's the problem there? There's nothing to map. There's nothing to map to. And so there'd be all these. All these causal diagrams, most causal diagrams have one or the other, and they, they wouldn't be able to map to it because they have nowhere to map to. Just like, you know, uh, it'd be like trying to map a, a set to the empty set or something, right? So, so, so you need at least one of each, right? Because those, in general, the causal loop diagrams might have a plus and might bind. And there's no harm having a plus if the your source one doesn't have it. That that's fine, right? Now, how if how if I were to say, well, maybe it has two minuses. Maybe the terminal one has two minuses. What's yeah? What would be the matter if I said I think the terminal one has one vertex, one plus link, and two minus links? What would be the problem with that? I say from every object there there's a map to it. What's the matter with it? It's not, what do we need for it to be terminal? Not just that there is a map, it has to be a unique map and there wouldn't be a unique one anymore, right? By having one of each, it's unique. It's unique, right? There's no choice in the matter where the pluses go. <laughs> There's no choice in the matter where the minuses go, but there's always a place for them to go. Are we good with that? Initial would be empty, Lucky. empty, and and we can see it. We can see it. We don't have to uh, sit around and and I mean it's good to think about it. Don't get me wrong. I don't I don't want to uh, diss it. I mean that that's that's excellent that you're thinking about it. But yeah, let's 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 um let's see how we can do it. Right. Um. Maybe I'll I'll go up to the top here and we can uh we could go and. 
well, I'll hear. Um, yeah, I'll I'll say I'll I'll put it at the the bottom of it. Okay. Um, so we're gonna take this and we're going to oh here we go. <laughs> I actually have it there already. Okay, I, I was busy on the plane. Um, okay, here's our terminal object. There we go, Jenna. Yeah. Uh, what's our initial one? Where is it? Empty, right? If if by the way, why do I have to say apex? You tell me. What if I didn't say apex? It gets angry. And why is it angry? Because, because it a product or well, okay. It it look it's it's a lot clearer for a product, but it's a limit. And it's a it's a type of limit, and a limit involves a cone, and there's something at the top of the cone we may informally call the terminal object or the product but it's at the top and it's really the whole structure that's the product now terminal case it's kind of trivial but um but yeah you still have to call it that yeah it, it's it's because it's a limit yeah yeah i mean well yeah and does apex then just like kind of take a piece of it and yeah it takes a, it takes a piece of it so watch maybe it'll be let, sorry shayan you were going to say something yeah mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if, ah, did I delete it? Okay, no, okay. Um, here we go. See, this gives an AC set limit. And, and that's a bigger structure. Because it, it encodes, yeah, it encodes like what's at the tip and what it in theory goes to. But um, by saying apex, then you extract just that, that, like that thing at the top, the top, the apex. The apex. Yeah. Apex Sorry. The the when we have when we compute limits, they and you may remember this from joy of abstraction. Um, in joy of abstraction, there is a um, uh, the, the, and every, every limit is a involves a cone. Yeah. As, so and I was reading they have beautiful cone pictures. The beautiful cone pic pictures. Yeah. Limit um uh joy of abstraction products and co-products. This I should I thought I actually had this open here, but uh, I think it's in a different work 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 workspace. But um well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Uh, if you have taught, there's a there's an apex for them. Yeah, we'll we'll see this in a minute. Okay, I guess I don't have that nice nice picture from Joy of Abstraction. But yeah, there's some very nice three D pictures from Joy of Abstraction. Unfortunately, Joy of Abstraction was left in the in the car that took me to the airport. And I see that the bias. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Okay, okay, um, okay. You tell me though, um. How about for, how, so that was for causal loop diagrams. How about for this case of the agent-like schema where we had a, um, where we had these dog and person, what's the initial object here? You tell me, or what's the, what's the, what's the terminal object here for this schema? Hmm? What do you think the terminal object is? got to be a particular instance of this, right? Because they're, they're taking a homomorphism into it. And it's got to be one, a unique one from each other encoding. What would it be? Mm -hmm. Well, think about it. If, if we had to have a mapping into it, so, so what in what set are each of these going to have to be? Well, if if we, there's another one which had dogs, it can't have any mappings into this one. Mapping from that set into the set for this, if dogs is empty, right? So dog needs to have at least what? One dog, right? The unique canonical dog. 
Um, the dog of all dogs. The dogs, a dog of all dogs. That's right. Person, imagine if person were empty. That could be a problem if we tried to map into it from a schema where person is not empty, right? Yeah, it's the co products and co-products chapter in there has that. And then actually pullbacks and pushouts has, has, has that really nice diagram. Yeah, those diagram, the opening pages. So what is it going to be? You tell me. It's got to be what? One for each of these, right? And, and let, let's go see it. Can we, can we see it? In fact, I may have already done it. Terminal. Where, where's the terminal? Uh, where, where? Here it is. Terminal one. There it is. Here's the terminal one. It has how many dogs? How many people? How many age groups? How many provinces? Yeah. Now, this is actually going to be useful for a little bit useful for thinking about the ABM portion of the course. Let me, let, let's suppose you tell me, would it be like, could you have an instance of this? I'm not asking for the terminal. Just could you have an instance of this with no dog, one person, one province, one age group? Yes, we could. We actually had that last time. Could you have this with one person? Could you have it with one dog and no persons? No. Why not? This is correct. It, you cannot. Because each dog needs a caregiver. And that would not be a function that it would have. So if there's a person, could province be empty? No, no. If there's one here, you, you need these. They, they have to go together. And this is going to be related to our notion of representables, okay? And, and sort of the minimal units you have to specify together. They kind of go together. And it kind of gets to basic building blocks of functors, things that go together. You have to have them, okay? And uh, and we're going to see that pretty soon. Okay, um, but let's go talk about products. Can we talk about products? Is that okay? Okay, hearing no objections. Let's go talk about products. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so we're we're back to graphs. Okay, there we go. Um, so I defined a couple graph instances, and and I defined a graph that looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, so it has three vertices. One, two, three. Count them. It has three edges, one, two, and then a third one here. Um, and no, it's a it's a pretty nice looking graph in my my eyes. It's kind of a, it has a certain requisite variety to it. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to close that. Um, I should probably delete that. One of those. We don't need to have that twice. Okay. Uh, well, let's recall. Okay. Um. I also define a connected pair. Are we good with this? Okay. Um, and now I have an end-to-end -end graph that, hey, I should really, by Nona's admonition, I, I should really look at it, right? Right, Nona? Yeah. Um, do it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. Are we good with that? Okay. Okay, so you're gonna tell me, you've been experimenting with these products. You're probably getting kind of the knack of it. You're kind of getting some thinking about it. Um, and I I wanna think this through with you. Um, so you're gonna tell me, um, so here's an end-to-end -end graph. I'm sorry, first let's go, let's go with something simpler. Here we have this. Here we have this little connected pair. If we took a product of that with itself, what would we see? Hmm? What would we see if we took a product of that with itself? Anyone? Sorry? What would we see? If we took a product, okay, four vertices, one, one, 
one, uh, one, two, two, one, and two, two. Okay, good. And and how many edges? Okay. Now this is this is it's a really it's something where sometimes there's conflicting intuitions, and it's one of these areas where it's really useful to start playing around with this to to think through it carefully. And in order to do that, I want to draw out some items here because it, it really refines your thinking, okay? Now, I would note that we could, of course, take take a, take a picture of it, like, and, and this says this, but I want to explain to you why. Can we do that? Sorry? From one graph to itself. Sorry, the a product from one graph to itself. Oh, what about it? Well, here there's an edge. Here it is. There's three vertices or four to vertices. One, two, three, four. And this connected pair with the connected oh, pair. One edge. Yeah. Let's 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 go think why that is. Okay. Can we, can we do it? Okay. So um, what I'm going to draw out here, I'm gonna just just to sort of simplify thinking about it. I'm gonna give them somewhat different names. Okay. Um, so I'm going to here call this um, uh, yeah A and B. Okay, and. If, if we take the product of a b with itself i'm going to arrange it like this if if that's okay um uh i'm gonna put it like like this okay um and i'm gonna call this a with a mm -hmm. and i'm gonna call this a with what b b I'm going to call this B with A and this B with what? B. B. That's right. And in this product, so, so we have these products of the vertices. And if we consider edges from a given product of vertices to another product of vertices, those edges will be a product of edges between them. Okay. And, um, and here, um, for example, from AA to AB, you might think, oh, well, you know, there's an edge from this A to this B, so there's going to be one. But no, 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 there's none from A to A. And so you need, actually, you need, there's only going to be a link here if you have arrow from this to this and arrow from this to this, um, because it's, it's a product of, of arrows, of those arrows, which are from this to this with a product of arrows. So there's some set of arrows from A to B, and you're taking the, the product of that with the, the set of arrows from A to B uh, here. And, and if one of those sets is empty, there's going to be no arrows uh, over it. So the edges here, the, the arrows in this, product diagram are going to be the product of the set of arrows uh, between these. And there's no set of arrow. The set of arrows from A to A is zero, so is empty. And so the product of them. So this is what it looks like, OK? And it's it's not maybe, oh, hey, what happened? There it is. There it is. Get back here. OK, Um, are, are we OK with that? Okay, and you'll notice that it has a bit of the uh, flavor of, of, and I can be faulted for saying this, but it has a bit of the flavor of and. You need an arrow from the first of the pair and the second of the pair, right? And in fact, you may or may not remember a product logically, in, in the logical domain, product is and. 
Yes, and multiplication. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Um. Uh. So so we have four vertices, the product of the vertices, and we have products of edges between those. But if an edge set is is empty, it, you know the resulting edge set. You know, um, when you take the product of it with another edge set, it'll be it'll be empty. Okay. Um. Now. How about the product of a connected pair with two edges end to end? You tell me. Two edges end to end. What's that going to yield? So it's going to be one of this times uh, the, uh, times this one here. What is that going to yield? Mm -hmm. What's that going to look like? Well, we can compute it here. How many edges is it going to have? Yeah. So, 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 so it's this with this. So it's a total of six vertices. Yeah, that's right. And how many edges? That's right. Which is two, right? Okay, so let's 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 make sure we're on the same page with it manually. Okay, so I'm going to label this a little bit differently. So I'm going to call that G one if we, if we could. Okay, G one. Okay, I'll make this a bit. Let's see. Sorry. Uh. Matrix, matrix. You're saying could we write a matrix? Yeah. Uh, we could, I, I think. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, we probably we probably could. I haven't really thought about that too much, but yeah, um, probably that would be okay. So I'm gonna label this C, D, E. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay. No. No. Let's let's go. Um, let's go consider this now. I don't know why you did that in red. Maybe not. Not um, probably not that can be that helpful to do in red. So I'm going to do it this way. Um, uh, I'm going to put C D E. Those are going to be my names of the vertices. So um, E. And what I'll do to make it real pretty is is put these things in red. Are we okay with that? How's that? Oh no! Oh no! No. Get back here. Okay. Let's 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 do that more artfully. Okay. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in red and I'm gonna put this one in. Okay. And and put it up like this. Are we okay with that? Okay. Good or not? Okay. So what are we gonna have here for the vertices? How many vert oops? Oh no. no. How many vertices are we gonna have? You know, six vertices. Eight, 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 yeah. Eight, eight, eight. yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so we're going to have, here we go. Maybe I should give a bit more, but I'm going to put them like this, okay? And each of these vertices, then, okay. Um, so I'm going to write this as a... C, right? A, D, and what is this one? A, E, B, C, B, D, and B, E. And you're going to tell me between which of them is there going to be edges? Between which vertices here are there going to be edges? You tell me. A, C, D, E. Okay. A, C to B, D, because there's one from A to B, right? So that'd be the first letters. And one from C to D, that's the second letters. And that's what we need. We need that pair, the, the set, there's one in, the, in each pair of those sets, right? Um, good. Okay, is that the only one? No. Mm hmm A, 
A E E what okay okay why would that be the start of an arrow because E isn't the start of an arrow here right right so you said A E to something but E doesn't have any arrows A, then e sorry A D to B E, to B -E. that's right because there's a set of arrows from A to B and a set of arrows from D to E. So that's a set of arrows from the product of those two sets, right? A, D to B, E. Are we good with that? Are we good with that? Like that? Are we good? Yeah. Right? So those are the two arrows in here. Are we good? It shows that, I'm, frankly, I like this layout more because I think it connotes like where these things are coming from. Are we are we good? Yeah. A, why did I? Because there's an arrow from, from I'm gonna, I'll circle it here, um, from A, to B, it's, there's a set of arrows from A to B. There's a set of arrows from D to E. So D to E. And so there's a, the product of those two sets is not empty too. There's one arrow, right? D to E has an arrow, this one right here, right? You're kind of finding a homomorphism in a way. And then putting oh, them together. Oh, but it's not I, quite that. I don't really think of it as a homomorphism. I just think like so so we have the vertices are a product of vertices, and the edges from one vertex to the other are gonna be the product of the edges mm -hmm. from from the 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 product of the product of the edges for the first part times the at times the set of edges for the second part there. For example, if we say A, E to B, C, there is A to B, but there is not E to C. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Oh, oh, did I, did I do it too far? Or did I do it just enough? Um. Okay, I don't know. Okay, okay, okay we good with that? Okay. Sorry, if you consider that in this graph you have an identity from a vertices to itself. Uh, yes. What yeah. happens? Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about exactly that because there's a logic to all of this, and I love I love that question. Larissa had some helpful comments in the chat. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, what does Larissa think? Yeah. Um, uh, she just said uh, there was a response to one to one or yeah one times one or to yeah. two times two. But for products, she says she finds the edge tables with SRC and target helps a lot to like understand. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Like, okay. Like source and target. You mean like looking at the 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 C set. Um like looking at the source target, these ones here. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really nice. Yeah. Good. Okay, um, but let's get to Mehmeti's question here. Um, if we if we could, C could we do this? Okay, so let's let's talk about a graph. I'm going to call this G three. Okay, I'm going to call it G three. Let's imagine that there's a graph. I'm going to call it F to G here, if we could, and we're going to have a link like this, or maybe I'll to, to, to have the aesthetics be nice, I'll make it like this. And then I'm gonna have a self link like this and a self link like this, okay? Now what I wanna ask is, what if we multiplied this? So, so this one is, this one is G1 times G1. Right, that's what I drew here. Are we good with that? This one is G. Um, I'm going to call it G one times G two. 
Mm -hmm. The product of those two. And, and probably instead of writing this little, I'm sorry, I should, I, this is the way product is 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 normally written here in CC. I don't like overloading it too much. Okay. So G1 times G2. Mm -hmm. Now how to instead of doing G1 uh with G2, what if we did G3 with G2? Can we do it? G3 instead of G1 with G3 instead of G2. Oops, all right. Uh G2. So here it's just like G1, but it has these, these things, um, uh, these little things here. What would that look like? How many edge, how many vertices would we have? Seats. Uh, Seats. Yeah. Yeah. So you tell me what they are. What are they? I label them in a way similar to this. What what are they? Uh, we have on the top row similar to that would be uh -huh. GC. GC. G D G E. Yeah. G C. G D and G E. What is the next one? F C. F D F E. Are we good? Okay. Um let me correct that. E F E. Okay. You tell me where there's gonna be links. No. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So first of all, there's we know where certain links are. What do we know for sure? Okay, okay. So so we'll get to that. Which links do we know immediately from our press calculations? FC to GD. FC to GD. And yeah, because those are just like this, right? This is okay, but what else do we have? What other ones? FC to FD. FC to FD. And what is it allowed that allowed this to happen? That that wasn't present here. What is it? that allowed that link to be drawn because now we have this non-zero edge edge set or you know from f to itself right and that's what allowed these things at this level f d to f e good g c to g d g d to g e right now so so excellent. What if what if this weren't there? What would what would that do to the graph? What what would happen? What would I need to erase if I just got rid of that? Did, did you see what I did? Suppose I got rid of this thing. What would need to disappear here? Well, you tell me. If, yeah, these ones here, right? If I got rid of this first one, what would disappear there? The bottom ones, right? Right? It's almost like the self ones kind of like self one at the source duplicates this at the source. Source this self one at the destination duplicates it at the duplicates this structure at the destination. This graph, this arrow from here to here duplicates it kind of going from here to here, right? So you tell me what what if I now had I'm going kind of off road here, but um, what what if we kind of had instead of well, I'm I'm, I'm gonna put it over there. Um, suppose I had a G hundred. <laughs> um, I don't want to clash with any any later ones. So I want to have a G a hundred, and and it consisted of something like this and this sort of edge like that. Now, what if I multiply G a hundred mm, uh, times, what if I multiply G a hundred times G two? What would I get then? Okay, okay. 
You tell me what it would look like, though. Okay, where would the four be? What, what would the four, well, oh, sorry, yeah, H, I. Okay, so, so this is, this is H, C, H, D, H, E, um, I, C, I, D, I, E, right? And, and where would there be lengths? Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. So, so you start to get a sense of regularity with this, right? There's a certain orderliness to the whole thing, right? Like, again, it's what I was saying before. Like, if if you were to mask this out, this this destination one, or sorry, the source ones would just be mask this out. The destinations one, if you were to mask this out, these ones going between them would disappear. This basically duplicates this this thing for each of these levels, right? Um. What what would be the effect if I were to add something in going back the other way? What do you think you'd see then? Let, let's suppose I were to to do, you know, this something like that. What would you get then? How would this be different then? Okay, and which two? I, I I admire you thinking about it. I'll, maybe it, this buys me time to label it G one hundred and one, <laughs> and 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 now I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna have, hey, gonna have this like this, and this like this. Um, well, I'm gonna. Keep those as red, but you're going to tell me what what am I going to see differently? So I'm going to have this guy, and then maybe I'll I'll use this nice color here, like that, just to emphasize what came from what. Eh? Um, what what would I see differently in the product? How many how many things are in the product? How many vertices? How many vertices? So sorry, this is for G one hundred one. Um, G. So I'm gonna draw G one hundred one times G two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and let's call these J K. Okay. Six vertices. What are these? J C J D J E K C K D. K E, are we okay? Okay or not? Yes. Okay, and then what would we see? Um, okay, good, 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 good. Well, look, we we, we know it's it's it. We know we have all these, right? Because it it has that as a subgraph, right? So we, oops, hey, we we know we have all that we had over here over this guy, right? Um, you good with that? Hey, get get back there. Okay, so um, like this, yeah. Uh, J C to K D, yeah, because because we have all that over over here, right? Okay, and what what else do we have though? What's coming from this guy here? You tell me. It all it all fits ah it all fits together. Hey no. What, what's the other what do we have from that? What do we have from that? What do we what do we have from from this guy going back here? What new thing? What do we have? No. 
Yes, and what? Yes, like that. <laughs> so like, these things lead to things at this level. These things lead to things at this level. This thing going across leads to it going the forward direction. This one going back leads to it coming like that, right? Um, there, there's, a, there's a logic to the whole thing, right? In terms of how to multiply graphs. Okay, so finally, we're, we're, we're finishing up here for this, but for graphs, what does the coproduct look like? Some. Okay. Okay. So, so can be a little bit more clarifying about that. Okay. So, what's the coproduct look like? Hmm. Where's the, where's the coproduct? Coproduct. What's the coproduct of these two things? What's the co-product of a, of a connected pair with a connected pair? It's just putting them next to each other. You, you have this next to this. It's like you have these, and now you have these or these. Um, um, yeah. Um, you, you can have a vertex and a connected pair. I could have a, um, a co-product um, yeah, co of two reciprocal pairs next to each other. That's kind of interesting. Um, uh, okay. Um, so that's, so co-product will put them next to each other. Okay. Um we have this, or we have that, or we have this. Um, they're just placed next to e each other. Now, as we'll see, this is going to be really important that whole product is like putting them next to each other disconnected. They're not going to be connected at all. They're not going to be talking to them. Where it's going to get interesting is when we do a push out, because a push out is going to put them next to each other with some overlap. It's going to glue them to each other. It's going to say, put them next to each other, except make these the same between them. Mm -hmm. Which is going to mean they're glued to each other around certain common substructure. John Bies talks about it being like, um, he talks about tinker toys. I don't know, Jenna, you would know what a Tinker Toy is. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you folks know Tinker Toy? Probably not. Larissa, you know what a Tinker Toy is? I think I've heard of them. They're like the buildy toys. They're like the buildy toys. John, John said like, well, this is like co-product. <laughs> they're all next to each other they're not glued together they're not stuck together in any way this is like co this is like push out they're all they're all stuck into each other they they they're stuck together in some way mm -hmm. but th this is an important intuition to have this is like this is co-product you got this or this or this or this. That's that's kind of nice. We have a we have a collection of these things. And if you think about it, set is very a, a set in terms of its elements is very co-producty. You have this element, or you have that one, or you have that one, right? I have the red elephant or the blue elephant or the green elephant. Um, right? Um uh they're kind of disconnected things, there's no mapping between them. Um, but once we get to, to push out next time, and in fact, I'm going to ask you to pursue something for your exercise for next time, you're going to see that you can start putting these things together and we're going to have structures where we stick them together around a common point. 
And this is going to be absolutely critical for assembling larger structures out of smaller ones, because we're going to stick together causal loop diagrams around a common point, or stick together stock flow diagrams around a common point, or stick together those sort of diagrams we use for querying um, by finding homomorphisms with people and dogs from the category of elements. We'll be able to kind of glue these things together at chosen points or chosen areas of overlap and say, and, and modularly stick them together. And this is how we do a lot of our work building these pieces up. And the most elemental of those pieces, the most basic minimal things that go together are gonna to be called representatives. And I'll give you a hint. The two representatives to build up a graph are are going to be what? Well, you might think, well, they're edges and they're vertices, but edges don't exist in isolation. Every edge needs what? Every edge needs what? It has to go along with vertices. It can't exist. You told me earlier, right? Something like this, that you can't have one edge and zero vertices. It needs vertices, right? So the representables for graphs, do you want to guess what they are? Well, we could ask CatLab, representable. Mm, oh, I have to do it after I declare the, um, oh, 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 what's the name? Uh, uh, mumble, mumble. And the, yeah, but what's the name of the AC set for graph? Uh, it's called graph, I think. Yeah, it's graph, it's graph. Yeah, so representable for a graph I'm gonna ask, what's its representable for V? What does that look like? Um, what's the kind of building block for V? What's the set of things that have to be specified for V? And this actually requires it to do a lot of work. It has to do some decomposition, I think, with the Oneida lemma and stuff like that. Um, so it's gonna take actually a, a bit of time to do the analysis. But we'll be able to do this for different ones. It's working. It's working. Okay. Um, um, the good thing is once it does it once, it can cache it. Okay. So it comes back and it says, for V, the minimal set of information that has to be provided is one vertex. Okay, fine. How about for E? What do you think the minimal set is to provide an E? One edge and two vertices. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So those are the natural building blocks, it turns out, for, for a, a graph, okay? What's the natural building block, do you think, for a primitive causal loop diagram? Mm. What's a natural building block for a causal loop diagram, I wonder? What's the natural representable for this? Representable for a primitive causal loop diagram instance. I'm gonna ask for a for a V. Well, it's just gonna be a V. How about for an L minus? What do you think it's gonna be? Well, I can't provide an L minus without a V. So it's gotta have a two Vs, one on, from which it goes, one to which it goes. Um, and, and it's got to have an L minus itself. Okay. These are kind of the natural building blocks out of which you construct these things. Um, and there's going to be a similar matter for, for an agent based like schema. Let's go look at the representables here. The representables here is going to be, and, and we'll be done here in a second, a jiffy. Um, here we go. I'm going to do representable here. We're going to ask for a person, what's the minimum amount of information I have to provide? A person, a group, and a province. Are we okay with that? That's like the minimum unit of information I can provide a representable. So if you wondered last time, why did I say like single person? I don't know if you remember this, but we said like um, single person equals representable. There it is. 
See up there? Yeah. How if I ask for what's what's the minimal information to provide a representable for a dog? Extrapolate out because when you say yeah. one person, then you also need an age group. Exactly, exactly. So, so if I want to, if I want to give you a the minimum information needed to specify for a dog, I want to be able to search for for a dog. What do I have to provide? Well, I have to provide for that minimal unit. Okay, a generic dog, but a generic person, a generic age group, and generic verdicts to look for like in my database to, to, to match all of those, right? These are the natural building blocks. And it turns out for, for stock flow diagrams, for example, there'll be natural building blocks. It won't be always the obvious ones. It's just like it won't be a disconnected edge in a graph. You can't provide that without the vertices and you can't provide a flow without either a stock from wh whence it comes or a stock to which it goes. You have to do one of those, eh? Um, I've, I've wondered, and I'll wonder aloud again, what if instead of in our palette for building up a stock and flow diagram with the option of dragging in representables instead of stock by itself, edge by uh, flow by itself, what if we we could drag in representable like those come together because you need they need to every flow needs to go with some stock and so how if we had the option of a stock a flow going into a stock or the flow coming out of a stock that that we drag it in together because it always goes together yeah anyway just something to think about we're going to come back to the notion of representable there's a reach a rich understanding behind it that's really tied in with the Oneida lemma. And, uh, and it ends up being very useful when we're dealing with uh, Asian based models, amongst other things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll talk about co products. Um, and we've kind of run out of time here, but we'll talk about co products. So. And we'll talk about it for not just, we really went a bit deeper into graphs because I wanted to talk about the logic of graphs. There's, there's a logic there, but I also want to talk about dynamical systems and what's the product of dynamical systems or what's the co-product of dynamical systems. Um, and we're going to be seeing pushouts and pullbacks of different systems too. But keep this notion in mind. The co-products like putting things side by side. You have this or that or that or that. But product product considers like combinations. I mean, are often that's kind of the sense that you have, but it but it's it's different. Like when we have pre-orders, you know, um, you get things like max and min um for, for numbers actually, and you get um, you know, things like union and intersection when we have when we have sets and so we, we have to be cautious about saying well it's all combinations for 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 um for products but as eugenia cheng said some of these categories are like souped up sets like there's a set of vertices and a set of edges and some of these intuitions from set that are product of sets is like pairs of things come in useful, but don't think that's always the case because there are some categories where the notion of product is very, is different, right? Like remember again, greatest common denominator, least common multiple come in, 